21st of August 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of community interaction, gaming discussion, and all that good stuff. You can email in mailbox at cynicalbrit.com. That is mailbox at cynicalbrit.com with topics for future shows. The game in the background is Elemental Tower Defense, which has now been ported to StarCraft 2. It used to be one of my favorite mods back with Warcraft 3, but damned if I can remember how to play it. The first email, and maybe the only email, depending on how long this tends to run on for, comes in from Onin that says, With the latest news about the Diablo 3 beta, it was revealed that Diablo 3 will feature an auction house run on real money. So far, the details are that the right to auction items for money will require a premium fee to be paid. It's limited to items only, so no legal gold selling. Not actually true, by the way. And Blizzard themselves will not sell anything either. To me, this just sounds like a very good reason to not even bother buying Diablo 3. Part of the multiplayer experience with Diablo 2 was the competition in gear. Farming your ass off to get that one awesome rune on the joy of finding a really rare item, knowing you could trade it in for a different one you desperately needed. Come Diablo 3, the most sensible thing to do as soon as you find anything rare and valuable is to sell it off for a few hundred dollars to someone with too much money and too little time on their hands. The effort is what makes the hunt for gear rewarding, and giving any alternative whatsoever degrades that experience. Furthermore, there are of course the problems of selling in-game power for money, which will actually be a much greater issue in Diablo 3 than it was in 2 with an integrated PvP system that will no doubt gain a huge following. Lastly, it sounds like Blizzard is suddenly condoning the concept of gold farmers, and I don't doubt for a second that it'll be a big market that China will instantly start investing in. What are your thoughts? Okay, right. First thing, factual inaccuracy, by the way, there is a huge, and I do mean a huge FAQ up, and you can go read it on MMO Champion, and you can buy gold. So, gold can be sold for whatever the going rate is on the auction house, just like an item. So, yes, you can buy gold. So, the way that this system is going to work is that there's going to be two kinds of auction house. There's going to be gold-based i.e. in-game currency, that's the same one, and real currency base, which is exactly the same only with real money, which is the insane one. Now, this is the most bizarre thing I could possibly think of in a Blizzard game, it really is. And in some ways it's okay, and in other ways it's the most horrific thing they've ever done by far. So, let's go into it. What exactly happens. Well, you can sell things for real money, and you can list things for real money. The first big problem I've got with this system is that there's a listing fee that actually costs you real money, and just like World of Warcraft, you can get undercut by a cent, or whatever. You can actually be undercut for real money, and you can end up having to relist your item. Now, <laughs> You guys remember the frustration you had in WoW, no doubt, when people just like, oh, I'm just going to list for a cent less than you, or indeed a copper less, and hey, they're going to buy the first one that comes up because it's slightly cheaper, hey, why not? And they're especially going to be frugal with real money. There's no way they're going to be buying the one that's a cent more expensive. So you get undercut, your stuff goes off the auction house, you still get charged. The listing fee is not refunded under any circumstances, regardless of whether or not that item is sold. So that in itself is freaking horrible. Secondly, when the item is sold, Blizzard takes a further fee. Just for no apparent reason, they just take a fee. And then, when you try and cash out, in order to actually get the money from your account into, say, your PayPal, they charge you again. So if you look through the FAQ, you'll notice there are three separate charging points where you will have money removed from you. So, Blizzard have created a license to print money that requires almost zero maintenance on their part. It is fairly ridiculous. Once they get the system set up, it will literally print money for them, and nothing else will happen. And once again, it shows that Blizzard feels the need to try and charge its players for everything it possibly can. And this is an attitude that's come from World of Warcraft, where you have a ton of paid premium services. A lot of them are essential for enjoying the game, because maybe you have to move to another server and things like that, or maybe you need to do a faction transfer in order to play with your friends, or indeed join the guild that you want to go into. So once again, you get charged out the ass for that. I mean, it costs more than a month's subscription just to do one of these things. And that system, once again, requires very little maintenance. It is entirely automated. So once again, a license to print money. I find the attitude, honestly, absolutely despicable. What happened, I might ask, to the time when games companies had to make a good game and then produce good content for it in order to be paid? What happened to that time? Because now we have Blizzard turning their game into this giant service, this effective eBay system within the game that just prints money. 
over and over and over again for them, and they have to do absolutely nothing. They're not obliged to add content to the game or anything like that, and it's even worse because, of course, it is a normal multiplayer game, so Blizzard don't have to add in content at all outside of expansion packs. Not at all. They are not obliged to do that. At least they have to do that in WoW, so you could say, well, you know what, the money that we're actually paying for all of these microtransactions, and I say microtransactions with the lucid sense of the word, I would hardly call $25 a microtransaction. $25 is like five indie games. Yeah, I'm gonna pay that to do a server transfer, Jesus. They are not obliged to add content to the game, so they are literally generating money for as long as Diablo stays popular from this system and doing absolutely nothing, which I find to be a massive cash grab. Secondly, the concern that you just brought up there is extremely valid, that of the PvP system. Personally, I think adding a PvP system into Diablo 3 was the dumbest thing in the world. You want to know why? It's a game based on random item drops. I mean, really now. So the first person to get the best items in the game is going to dominate freaking everything. And please don't tell me it's going to be skill-based in that regard. I mean, how are they going to do it? Are they going to do an item level restriction system? The PvP to me just seems like a Bloodline Champion style arena game, only massively imbalanced because it takes equipment into account. And equipment, of course, is mostly random drop based. So enjoy farming for years to get the equipment you need to fight PvP or whatever. I don't see that as an enjoyable thing at all. It seems to be absolutely awful. I assume the excitement for Diablo PvP comes from the unofficial PvP community that cropped up during Diablo 2. I was not really involved in Diablo 2, I really do not see the appeal. If people want to go for it, then fine, but I would think that PvPers would be rather annoyed by the fact that you can now basically buy power. How skill-based is it going to be? We just do not know. It's as simple as that. We don't have a sodding clue. We will see. Will we not? Now, I think the biggest problem that I have with this system is the fact that it is legitimizing something that for the longest time has been against the rules and they are brazenly going in and allowing you to buy power and this is one of these things that a lot of games have been avoiding up until now particularly free to play games that's one of the traps that a lot of the bad free to play games jump into hey you can buy power Whereas good free-to-play games, like, say, DDO and League of Legends, they try and avoid that as much as possible. Sure, in DDO, maybe you can get a big bag that will help you out a little bit. And in League of Legends, you can buy a boost that will allow you to gain influence points faster and therefore get runes quicker. But you really can't buy direct power. Here, you can literally buy the best weapon in the game by just having enough money. You can completely skip the process of acquiring it, and let's be honest, the reason Diablo 2 has been around for so long and is still popular, aside I might add from modding, which is one thing they are not allowing you to do, so GG on that one, is that people spend ages trying to optimize their character and getting the absolute best items. If you can just buy your way there, then I have to wonder why you wouldn't just do that. Especially since there's an auction house with gold and things like that. And you will can, of course, buy gold. So you can just amass a massive hoard of the sodding thing. And then maybe go on the gold auction house and have a look and see, oh, well, you know what? I've bought gold for this price and now I can go back and grab whatever I want from the gold auction house. It's, it's just so bizarre and horrendous, in my honest opinion. It really, truly is. I just find the entire attitude behind it to be absolutely reprehensible in almost every possible respect. And don't you dare go blaming this on Activision. Blizzard have made these decisions. They are not separate entities. These ideas are Blizzard's ideas, and they've said time and again that, hey, we are free from the influence of Activision. We pretty much do our own thing. Well, that, this is their own thing, along with all of the other services that they implemented. Don't blame it on that. That's exactly what Activision Blizzard wants you to do. They want Activision to be the big gu bad guys, because you know what? People care less about publishers than they do about developers. They're still going to buy Blizzard games, even if Activision is the most evil publisher in the entire industry. And for the longest time it has been. EA is trying to get back up there, don't get me wrong. But I don't know, after this, I'm not entirely convinced that that's going to happen. When it comes down to it, it's legitimizing this thing that they've banned for years and was considered cheating. And yes, I can see their point of view in saying, look, it's going to happen anyway. At least we should make it safer. I mean, hell, it's the same freaking principle as giving contraception to teenagers. Like, we know you're going to do it anyway, so you might as well at least not catch an STD. Which is a fair point. 
But still, the way that they're implementing this is not as, hey, look, we can provide a safe and secure home. It's, here is a license for us to print a ton of free money. Now, there will be some limited cost, I would imagine, when it comes to running the system, mostly in terms of card processing fees and withdrawal fees and things like that, but I very much doubt that's going to be anywhere close to what Blizzard is actually able to make from this. I mean, even if they take 5%, and that actually might be a fairly low figure, particularly when you consider the three charges. The listing fee, the winner's fee, and then the cash-out fee. Who knows how much it's going to be? I cannot even imagine. Siphoning off that much money is just crazy. They're not doing this to keep people safe. They're doing this to make a lot of money. If... As a direct result, it also makes people a bit safer from this kind of stuff than okay, but I really don't think they should be legitimizing the idea that you buy power. And it is brazenly that, and nothing but that. Hey, let's buy power with methods f that are outside of the game. I despise that idea without question. I do not play games where you are able to do that. The games that I play that have microtransaction models in them, DDO and League of Legends, do not allow you to do that. It is absurd beyond measure that any company would think that this would be an acceptable way to conduct business. It shatters the legitimacy of the gameplay. You can cheat your way with cash in a competitive multiplayer game to victory. I do not believe that there's going to be a huge amount of skill involved in Diablo 3. Honestly, I'd be very surprised if it had more skill than, say, BLC or Hell, even League of Legends, Dota or Hon. I don't know that for sure, but there is certainly the possibility that it will be a very easy game that is, for the most part, based on gear. Gear which you can acquire by paying for it. It's fairly horrible, isn't it? Diablo, as they point out, over and over again, in the FAQ, is a game about getting gear. Yeah, it's really exciting to find a new drop. Yes, and you know what people are going to think now if they get a rare drop? How much money can I get for this? The funny thing is, as well, that if a lot of people do start getting these drops and just keep putting them up on the auction house over and over and over again, then the price is going to go down overall. So I can't really see a lot of Westerners making a ton of money off of this, but I absolutely can see the Chinese buying tons of these bloody things and then farming this stuff and selling it and yes they're gonna have anti-botting but that's not stopping huge houses of people playing diablo 3 for 14 hours a day in order to simply sell items and make a ton of money now this has been legitimized and what's next i have to wonder how long is it going to be until we see a direct method of doing that within World of Warcraft? Because you know what? It would make more sense in WoW than it does here. There are some MMOs that allow you to do that. EVE is an example. You can buy Plex and sell Plex. Admittedly, their system is incredibly elegant and their economy is extremely well managed. So it doesn't really have that much of an impact on the game. Here, I don't think Blizzard are capable of that. I certainly don't think the economy is going to be well managed in any way, shape, or form. WoW certainly isn't. We've seen all sorts of nonsense in that regard. It would have made more sense to put it into WoW. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to put it into Diablo 3. And if there were ever a shark to jump, the blizzard has not already leapt over, this would be it. This is one gigantic sodding whale shark in the room. Let's not forget, of course, that along with this announcement, we learned that there will be no modding of any description. Those of you who do not believe that Diablo 2 had a good modding scene, you're crazy. Go and learn what you're talking about. My god, there are huge numbers of really good mods, to the point, I might add, where a lot of features for Diablo 3 were actually borrowed from some of the big mods. Modding is a huge deal. It's kept Diablo 2 alive for ages. So, none of that. No, nope, we can't have any of that whatsoever. So I'm going to have to rely on Blizzard for content, and you know what? Blizzard is not obliged to give any of it. They might release an expansion, but aside from that, probably about it. And you must be online, and of course, there is no land mode. So, enjoy that, folks. Enjoy that. No playing Diablo 3 on a plane. Indeed, I believe in an interview they said, well, you know what? There's other games you should play on a plane, or indeed a train, or anything like that. Ridiculous. 
It makes me much, much more excited to look at Grim Dawn, which I believe is the spiritual successor to Titan Quest, an amazing Diablo-style game. And, of course, Torchlight 2, coming from Runic, which will have full LAN, which will be fully moddable, and, of course, will be a one-time purchase with no microtransactions involved. Oh, it's really hard to care about Blizzard at the moment, isn't it? It really, really is. And it's funny to see the difference between the various teams in Blizzard. I mean, StarCraft 2, for instance, is not much of a cash grab. Admittedly, they are implementing a system which will allow them to grab cash in Heart of the Swarm, but at least it benefits mod makers in a very significant manner, so it actually encourages higher-quality user-made content, so it benefits everybody. What does this encourage? And encourage sitting in your bedroom, farming for virtual items, because you can do that instead of getting a real job now, apparently. Oh, God. It is legitimized slave labor of your player base, and you then keep taking cuts from all of these sales. It, it's maniacally evil. <laughs> do you not believe this? I do. It's absurd. I am so sorry. It is absurd, and Diablo 3 has gone down so far in my estimation at this point. Disappointing. It really, really is. God, I could go on all day about this, but that's just a small selection of the problems that I have with this system. And no doubt, you will provide more. Feel free to leave comments beneath this video on this particular discussion and have a nice, healthy debate. Just to remind you, healthy debates do not involve swearing at each other. Now, just a quick note about what's going to be happening over the rest of the week. I am going to Helsinki. Yes, that's in Finland on Wednesday. So there will not be any mailbox content on Wednesday. I am then commentating the 15,000 euro Asus ROG tournament at the Assembly Summer event in Helsinki on the 4th to the 5th. So content on the channel will mostly be StarCraft. I'm commentating around 13 hours a day, so I would not expect any other content. I will try and maybe get some extra content done tomorrow and put it in the stash and maybe try and release it maybe some terraria that's probably a good idea so i'll get in touch with jesse and do that now after that on the 6th to the 7th i will still be in finland there will be some activities i will be commentating a heroic firelands raid with the full membership of paragon those of you who remember at dreamhack i did a commentated raid there in this case we will be doing Heroic Firelands, all of Paragon's going to be there, so that should be quite fun. That will also go up on the channel, so that's something to look out for. And I may get some time to put out some mailbox videos then, but please do not expect mailbox videos for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It is unlikely that they will be there, simply because I am going to be working flat out from when I wake up to when I go to bed. If I get the time, I will squeeze it in, just please do not expect it, and obviously... It's a big event for me. It's the biggest tournament I've ever live commentated. So I do have to focus on that. Okay, folks, that's me done for the day. And I'll see you next time.